Back in 2023, I stopped using Eero Pro 6 because I was disappointed in the capacity it lacked for handling all the devices in my smart home. But I miss the simplicity and the ease of use that comes with Eero. You probably heard me and other smart home YouTubers emphasize the importance of running ethernet wires through your home for the most reliable connections. Still, for many people, that just isn't possible or practical. For wireless connections, the Eero Pro 7 promises to be a generational leap in capacity for Wi-Fi, going from a recommended 75 connected devices for a trio of Eero Pro 6 access points to over 200 for a trio of Eero Pro 7 access points. Many reviewers of Wi-Fi 7 devices say it's not worth to upgrade unless you have over a gig of external internet speeds, but I wanted to find out if this generational leap is enough that you don't really need ethernet for most of your smart home, at least as much as you used to. And stay tuned to the end to hear what made me leave my Ubiquiti Unify system to choose Eero instead, and if I think that applies to you as well. If you're new here, I'm Eric Wielander. I've been working in app development on top of Apple's platform since 2011 and building out my smart home here on YouTube since 2018. So if you're into Apple or smart home tech, consider subscribing. Eero is a San Francisco-based company that's taken an Apple-like approach to simplifying Wi-Fi since 2014. They were early to the idea of creating a mesh network of multiple wireless access points around your home so you don't have any Wi-Fi dead spots. Amazon acquired the company in 2019, but has largely kept them as an independent company. But there are some special integrations between Eero and other Amazon products we'll get to in a second. Eero Pro 7 sits between the Eero 7 and the Eero Max 7. If you're watching this channel, you probably need something more than Eero 7. Eero Max 7 has double the ethernet ports of Eero Pro 7, including two at 10 gigabits per second. It also has extra wireless power for five and six gigahertz bands, but that's not as helpful for smart home tech, which mostly operates at 2.4 gigahertz. I liked the balance of Eero Pro 7 being powerful, but also not costing more than my refrigerator. So I purchased an Eero Pro 7 three pack. One of the things that stood out to me on the box is all the smart home labels, including matter. We'll get to that in a minute. Inside the box, you get three base stations, as Eero calls them, with USB-C power adapters for each. And one of the most beautiful braided RJ45 ethernet cables I've ever seen for connecting your internet modem. That might be the nerdiest thing I've ever said. Each base station has two five gigabit ethernet ports on the back and USB-C for power. They stand upright, which means you will see them more compared to older flat Euro access points, but I'm guessing the new design helps with signal strength. For setup, you first need to connect your main access point or base station to the box supplying the internet to your home, like a cable modem. If you have one from your internet service provider that's a router, let's say, be sure it's set up in what's called bridge mode. ISP customer support usually is not great at helping you with this, but some searching around the internet for your model number on the box plus bridge mode should get you the right results. Otherwise, like if you're using 5G home internet, you'll need to use Eero in bridge mode, which the app can help you walk through during setup. Essentially, the side that's not in bridge mode is the boss of your network. And ideally, you want your Eero to be in control of that. Then Eero's app will walk you through the process with nice setup illustrations. When configuring your Wi-Fi, if you use the same network name and password as your previous connection, pretty much all of your devices will just auto connect to the new network, which is probably what you wanna do. Once your first base station is set up, the app will walk you through the setup for the others. Since I already have ethernet running to a couple places in my home, I hardwired one of my additional access points in my garage and left the other one in my dining room wireless. At some point during setup or after, you'll probably see at least one promotion for Eero Plus. This is Eero's subscription service that provides enhanced threat protection, content filtering, and usage analytics in the app. It also comes with one password and malware bytes included. I think if you're considering Eero, you should probably plan on doing Eero Plus as well. I signed up for the annual plan. The content filtering and device analytics are key for me understanding and controlling my home's internet. But you aren't required to subscribe. You can still use your Eero's just fine without Eero Plus. 
you'll just miss out on the extra management features. So what about that matter label on the box and the thread and Zigbee radios? If you use Amazon's smart home platform, it will use Eero's access points as matter controllers for talking to your smart home devices. With your home's thread network on newer versions of the thread standard that share a unified thread network, these thread radios in your Eero will also serve as thread routers. Now, I primarily use Apple Home, so the Amazon Smart Home benefits aren't that big of a deal to me on the surface, but it leads to one key difference with Eero regardless of your preferred smart home platform. Eero Pro 7 has excellent matter over Wi-Fi device support. Unlike some Wi-Fi companies looking at you, Ubiquity, Eero with Amazon works directly with the CSA to ensure they have great support for all the details of the matter over Wi-Fi spec, including details like unique local address prefixes with IPv6. These address prefixes and lots of other details I'm not really familiar with seem to be extremely helpful in setting up devices. Just be sure IPv6 is turned on in your Eero settings, of course, and they'll take care of the rest. It was on by default for me. We'll get more into the ubiquity comparison in a minute, but for now, understand that after switching to Eero Pro 7, I haven't had a single issue adding matter over Wi-Fi devices to my Apple home. This is a huge win for me and probably you, regardless of what Wi-Fi you're switching from. Another great smart home feature of mesh networks like the Eero Access Points is Ethernet ports. Plenty of smart home devices still require a small bridge of some kind that is best connected to your home with Ethernet. You can plug these into any open Ethernet port on any of your Eero base stations, even if the base station is wirelessly connected into your mesh network. It will make the new device work as a wired one. No need to run cables in your home's walls or floor. If you need a few more ethernet ports, you can also get a small switch to hang off of your Eero. Now, many critics of Apple are probably already in the comments complaining about how Apple has so few devices that support Wi-Fi 7 at the time of recording this video. And that's true, but the additional six gigahertz band in Wi-Fi 7 is also visible to Wi-Fi 6E devices from Apple, including a lot of their modern laptops and iPads. This gives you a nice speed boost over Wi-Fi 6. Of course, devices like iPhone 16 on Wi-Fi 7 can take advantage of special features like multi-link operation, delivering theoretical performance performance of up to 3.9 gigabits per second. YouTube must already be full of people running all kinds of speed comparisons between these different devices and scenarios, so I'm going to skip that here. In real world use, I never notice any kind of slowdown. I moved many of my wired devices like Apple TVs and Sonos speakers over to Wi-Fi, and I was the only one in my house to know this. Everything else? worked perfectly. This is in part due to upgraded hardware in Eero Pro 7, but also due to work on Matter and Apple Home to make those connections more reliable in the years since I left Eero. So is this Eero system worth the upgrade for you? Well, if you're just getting into smart home tech and looking for a more powerful Wi-Fi system, this is my current recommendation across the board. Smaller apartments and homes might only need one or two Eero Pro 7s, and a home above, let's say 6,000 square feet, is probably better served by an Eero Max 7, which I didn't test. Yeah, I'm sure there are other other great Wi-Fi 7 mesh systems out there, but from what I've seen, they often struggle to have the same software and technical polish that Eero has. If you have an existing Eero 6 or older system, yes, this is worth the upgrade. If you already have Eero 6E, I would only upgrade if you have lots of Wi-Fi 7 devices already in your home or you're hitting plenty of other Wi-Fi issues. Now, what if you have Ubiquity Unify? As I mentioned earlier in the video, I left Eero thirsty for more network capacity. Consumer Wi-Fi makers hadn't caught up to the modern demands of a smart home in 2023, and Matter had yet to improve the inner workings of Wi-Fi operations for smart home tech. This led me to a truly professional grade solution of Ubiquity Unify, but Ubiquity's priority is always going to be small and medium business customers. They aren't working with the CSA, and despite having an Internet of Things set of features, they don't appear to be prioritizing great matter over Wi-Fi support 
for home users. Yes, Ubiquity gives you all the dials and switches to make those changes yourself if you want to spend the time. And if you bought the system already, you are probably comfortable with that. I don't think you need to up and change to Eero. You have a great Wi-Fi system with Ubiquity. But for me, I get lots of brand new matter over Wi-Fi devices here to test, often before their public release. So software isn't fully baked yet. And I was finding myself jumping through more and more troubleshooting and special network settings just to go through my day-to-day -day work with this YouTube channel setting up new matter over Wi-Fi devices. So for me, I think for new users considering smart home Wi-Fi systems, I don't think you should choose Ubiquity unless you know you want its modular features and flexibility. Eero Pro 7 gives me the capacity and matter support my smart home needs to keep running strong for years. It fixed my smart home coming from a multi-network mess I was troubleshooting against way too often. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Wi-Fi in the comments if you haven't shared them already. What are you currently using and do you think Wi-Fi 7 is worth the upgrade for your smart home in the future? I'm not always great at replying to the comments, but I do read them. I'll also leave links in the description if you're interested in picking up the new Eero Pro 7 for yourself. And if you want to see one of those new Matter over Wi-Fi devices, check out my new robot vacuum that works with Matter and Apple Home in this video right here. Thanks again so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.